And now, the Mole Mystery Theater, presented by M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tender skins. Good evening. This is Jeffrey Barnes welcoming you to the Mole Mystery Theater, the program that presents the best in mystery and detective fiction. Tonight, as a return engagement, we bring you a hard-boiled crime story entitled Angel Face by Walter Wilson. And with us to play the title role is one of the loveliest stars of stage and screen, Miss June Havoc, who has captivated New York with her great performance in the Broadway hit play Dream Girl. So stand by now to meet Miss June Havoc as Dolores in Walter Wilson's story of deceit and death, Angel Face. Well, gosh, Mr. Barnes, sounds like there's murder in the air, all right. But say, let's forget about crime for a minute and look at the brighter side of life. For instance, the way a man can cheer himself up in the morning with a clean, comfortable shave. A mole shave. Yes, sir, man. It's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. That's right. Shaving needn't be painful, not if you shave with Mole. Because Mole is a heavier cream, it not only softens your whiskers, it stands them up straight, ready for a smooth, slick shave. So you shave faster, closer, easier, and you shave painlessly with Mole. The heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or tender skins. Try it. Mole. And now for tonight's Mole mystery, Angel Face, starring Miss June Havoc. Our scene is a fashionable and high-priced nightclub in midtown Manhattan. Cause angels are so few But until the day that one comes along I'll string along with you I'm looking for an angel Say, waiter, have you seen this? Yeah, I know. She's waiting for you all right. Corner table. You're a little late tonight, Mr. Anglin. Yeah, I know. Thanks. Oh, here you are, Dolores. Hello, Joe. Sorry I'm late. Oh, gosh, Dolores, you look so lovely. Oh, gee, thanks. I'm getting so I can't think about anything but you. All day at the bank, I keep wishing it was time to get off so I could see you. Oh, gee, you're sweet, Joe. I think about you all of the time, too. I guess I thought there never could be anybody like you. For me, anyway. I never thought I'd need anybody like you. A real nice guy like you. <laughs> oh, you know what some people think of chorus girls. Gee, you make me feel like something out of this world or something. You are, Dolores. You've got a face just like an angel. You say such pretty things. Sometimes I almost want to cry you say such pretty things. (laughs) Oh, gosh. And three weeks ago, we didn't even know each other. But we were meant to meet, honey. We were meant to stay together, too, you and I, for always. We can't let anything interfere and spoil things for us ever. Why, Joe? You think that too, don't you, Dolores? Why, darling, what's the matter? Well, of course nothing's ever going to spoil things for us. I couldn't live without you, Dolores. I just couldn't live without you. Joe, I love you. I love you as I've never loved anyone before. You're the first person who's ever been really kind to me. Darling. But I know something's the matter. Tell me. Maybe I couldn't help, but tell me, huh? It hurts knowing there's something wrong and me not knowing what it is. So I could help. Oh, Dolores. Is it something at the bank? Joe, it's not something at the bank. Honey, honey, please, please Is it? don't. Well, it... Yes. Joe. I, I was going to put it back, honey. I just needed some money quick. What the floor? Joe, what did it? It was important. It was the first important thing that ever happened to me. I couldn't let it slip away. Joe. Joe, do you mean to say you did it for me? All that money you've been spending on me, taking me to expensive places like don't this. Don't you see? Was... I was afraid I'd lose you. Oh, Joe, look. 
I got a little money saved up. Not much, of course, but some. You take it and put the money back. Put it back if it's enough. How much was it? You do that for me? Well, of course, honey. Oh, but it's too late for that. It was only four or five hundred, but the auditors will catch up to me in a day or two, and then it'll be all up. They came unexpectedly. No, it's no use to Well, they can't do this. Look, look, we'll run away. We'll go somewhere where they'll never find us. Oh, gee, they can't do this to us. It isn't as if we wanted so much, you and I, just a chance to be together and be happy. Why does the world do this to people? Two little people who just want to love each other, that's all. I only did it because I loved you so much. Joe. Now I'm hurting you, too. About me, I wouldn't care, but not you. No, they can't do it. We won't let them. I never had anything to live for before you came along. I'm not giving you up. I don't care what we have to do. Oh, you don't know what you're letting yourself in for. I don't care. Wherever you go, I'll go with you. You won't be afraid? Not with you, I won't. I won't be afraid of anything. Oh, Joe. Hold my hand, hold it tight. Darling. It'll be all right. We'll make out, won't we? Joe, I said it'll Dolores, be... Dolores, it's going to take money to get away. Well, you can have everything I got. Hey, I, I can have yeah, that Yeah, but they're, they're going to be after me anyway, Dolores. What do you mean? A lot of money'd help. There's an old saying, you might as well hang for a sheep. <gasps> Joe. Look, they don't suspect anything yet, but I'll have to work fast. If I could lay my hands on some real money, say 20000 Oh, no. We got troubles enough. They're going to try to send me to jail for a few hundred anyway, Dolores, and with 20000 Oh, won't this just make it worse? Darling, it can't be any worse. Will you stick with me, Dolores? Will you? Will you, darling? I told you I'd do anything. Whatever we have to do, I'm sticking with you, Joe. <laughs> Please? Are you a locksmith? Yeah, you want some keys made, perhaps? No. No, I want you to do a job for me. Sort of a special job. Why not? I'll make it worth your while. See, here's the address right here in the neighborhood. Miss uh, Dolores Still, apartment 11E, 801 Bedford Street. I don't know about I'll this. have you to see, explain have it to, to you when we get there. Well, if it's a lock, I could fix I it. I told you it. I'd make it worth your while. Well, look, I'll have to charge you for that special job like this, leaving my shop and... Will this and... do? Oh, sure, mister, sure. For this, I can fix. <laughs> I worried so every minute. Just I think it's all right. Nobody noticed a thing. They won't know till they balance the books tomorrow night. By that time, we'll be a long way away. They won't think anything tomorrow morning when you don't show up for work? No, I told one of the boys I was going to the races. He's going to tell them I phoned in and said I was sick. That'll give me a good start on it. Sure it will. It'll work out all right. You'll see. Well, here it is in this little satchel. $20,000. Now, look, honey, I want you to have a duplicate key to the satchel in case anything happens to you. Oh, me. no, no. Nothing must happen to you, Joe. It can't. It just can't. No, no, of course nothing will happen to me, honey. I only meant just in case. Oh, no, I don't want the key. If anything happened to you, I wouldn't want the money. What good would it do me? The only reason we got it is so that you and I can have a chance at living and belonging to each other. Well, maybe we're doing wrong. I don't know. I, I guess people would say it's wrong. Only it's the only way we have a chance of being together. And that couldn't be wrong, could it? No, darling. You and me, that's the rightest thing in the world. We'll have to get going in a minute, but... Just let me kiss you. Darling. Joe, you're trembling. Yeah, yeah, I know. It'll, it'll pass. It's just my nerves. It'll pass off in a minute. Here, no, you take a little brandy. I'll fix you up. Okay. No, here you are. Thanks. Yes, I need it. You're not having it? Oh, Joe, you know I never could drink brandy. Well. Ah, that feels good. That's what I needed, all right. Sure, Joe. Yeah, just what you needed. Oh. Isn't that funny? Mm, all of a sudden, it... What's the matter? Oh. It's so, so dizzy. So 
course, that brandy. <laughs> Joe. Joe. Coast clear. All set? Sure, Al. Did he fall for it, Dolores? Of course he fell for it. The sucker. As the curtain falls on Act One of tonight's Mole mystery, Joe lies on the floor unconscious, leaving Dolores and her friend Al free to carry out their secret plan. Well, Dan, it looks as if Angel Face didn't quite live up to her name, did she? Not true, Mr. Barnes. As true as what I'm about to say right now, which is... Men, if your morning shave feels like a blowtorch, chances are you have tough whiskers or a tender skin. So shave with Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream, and get a smooth, slick shave. Yes, Mole is the cream that's ideal for wiry whiskers or a sensitive skin. Because it is heavier, Mole not only softens your whiskers... It stands them up straight while your razor cuts them off close and clean. With Mole, you shave faster, closer, easier, and you shave painlessly. Try it. See if you don't say, it's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or tender skin. And now back to Jeffrey Barnes and Act Two of Angel Face, starring Miss June Havoc. A young bank clerk, Joe Anglin, has stolen money so he can run away with a supposed chorus girl, Dolores. But upon his arrival with the money at her apartment, she gives him knockout drops and then telephones an apparent gangster sidekick named Al. Al? Al? Yeah. Dolores. Gee, well, hey. there he is. Out like a light. Nice going, baby. Ah, oh, it was a cinch. So you sure can handle him. Well. Now, come on, kid. We got work to do. Don't I even rate a kid? Oh, sure, baby. I, I was only thinking maybe we won't... Come here. Look, baby. Al, is that all? Oh, well, yeah, Dolores. Yeah. Well, that's better. You liked that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. You sure. still love your little Dolores, don't you? Why, you couldn't get along without her now, could you, Al? Oh, sure, you know I love you, Dolores. Sure, Dolores knows her little boy loves her. She just wants to be sure, that's all. Ah, oh, Dolores. And Al wouldn't ever think of leaving his little Dolores, now would he? That wouldn't be a wise thing to do at all, would it? Take it easy. Dolores, what's eating you? You know me. Sure, I know you. We've been around a lot together, you and me. Isn't as if this is our first job. Yeah, now. sure, Dolores. And it won't be the last. Mm, not if they're all this easy. Oh, boy, what a cinch this guy was. He fell for it even harder than that guy in Chicago. What was his name? Tom? Oh, yeah, Tom Stevens. Don't use names like that. Someday you'll say something in the wrong place. Oh, relax. Everything's hunky-dory. Yeah, I know, but you... What are you worrying about Tom Stevens for? They're still looking for him in that payroll he made off with. Tom's been six foot under for nearly a year now, and even if somebody does dig up that trunk... Dolores, lay off. (laughs) You know, Tom was kind of nice. He always used to call me Angel Face, remember? Angel Face, uh... What's the matter with Angel Face? Uh... Oh... Come on now, Al. Don't look so sour. We just made 20 grand, and I feel swell. Come to think of it, I feel kind of hungry. Hungry? Sure, hungry. What's the matter with that? I'll, come on, I'll rustle up something in the kitchen. No, no I, I couldn't eat a thing. Come on now. That's no way to talk. We got a job to do tonight. 
You gotta keep up your strength, Al. Well, well, look, let's get that guy out of the way before someone walks in. Nobody's gonna walk in, and him, he's out cold for a good four hours. Well. Oh, okay. Okay, come on, let's dump him in the trunk. I'll give you a hand. Yeah, yeah, let's get this thing over with, huh? I wonder why they always weigh so much more when they're out this way. Well, I don't know. Yeah. All right, close it, Al. I suppose we get going, What's huh? your hurry? I told you I was hungry. Come on out in the kitchen. It beats me the way you call All oh, right, all right. I tell you, he's out for hours. We got plenty of time. Because when he comes to, <laughs> he's going to be six feet under. Shut up, will you? Will you come along? We'll look in the icebox. Maybe I can find you a chicken hawk. <laughs> Not the red light. Oh, will you take it easy, Al? We're not trying to catch a train, are we? Oh, I don't like it. Maybe someone saw us. Maybe someone will stop us or something. Sure, maybe this, maybe that, maybe anything. Maybe we wouldn't have a thin dime between us if I listened to you squawking all of the time. Well, go on ahead. You got the green. Okay, okay. I just feel better when we get rid of this load. I don't like driving around with anything hot like oh, this. Ah, you're a dope. We haven't got such a hot load. Oh, yeah? We could face a murder rap and you say it ain't hot. Not on this trip, Al. Not on the way out. That guy's alive still, ain't he? Of course, I admitted it takes some fast talking to explain why we got him in a trunk. But if somebody was to stop us this very minute and found him there, it wouldn't be no murder rap. He's alive. Oh, just relax. We got no worries. Deep enough, isn't it? Yeah, okay. That hole will make the trunk all right. I'll drag it over. Yeah. I tell you, I'll be glad to see the last of this. Gee, it's heavy. Yeah, let's shove it down. No. No, wait a minute. What for? I uh, just want to see if I can hear him breathe. Them. Hear anything? Not a thing. You suppose he... Oh, no, you couldn't hear a thing through the trunk anyway. Just out cold from that drink I gave him. Open it up if you want to see. No, no. All right, then. What are we waiting for? Here, help me give it a shove. Okay, now shovel the dirt back in. Al, take your shovel and get to work. Al, what are you just standing there for? Comes to down there under the ground. And there isn't any air. Any, any... Al! Or... What do you think the air's gone on? It's all over. Even before it comes to. Give me that shovel, you... Top's covered over. You can hardly see any of that trunk now. There, you can finish it. Take the shovel, Al. Well, that's over with. Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand cash. Yeah. I guess we can use it, all right. Yeah, darn tootin' we can. There's more where that came from, too. What do you mean? If the guy's dead, how can you get... He wasn't the last sucker alive. There's plenty more where he came from. Oh, now, now, look, Dolores, don't you figure we ought to lay low for a while? We don't want to take no chances. We got enough to last us a while now. Who's taking any chances? Oh, no one will ever pin anything on us. Yeah, but, but I still think it wouldn't do no harm to lay kind of low for a while. Al, you're never gonna change. 
What do you mean I'm never going to change? You're a small timer. Just like when I picked you up. A small time punk. That's all you'll ever be. Hey, don't talk that way. Shut up. Small time punk. Small time racket for small time dough. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, at least I didn't have no murder rats hanging over me till I met you. I can thank you. Well, of all the ungrateful lo- Here I pick you up practically out of the gutter. I make a man out of you. I cut you in on some big time stuff, and that's the gratitude I get. Just let me tell you one thing, pretty boy, and I want you to Delor- know... Dolores. Dolores. Uh, I... I, I'm sorry, Dolores. It's just my nerves. I say things I don't mean. Well, that's better. It's just my nerves. See, I get to thinking about that guy in the trunk and the cop. He's six feet underground, Alan. Why should you worry about him anyway? You know, Joe wasn't exactly a friend of yours, Al. After the way he made love to me, you'd hardly call him a friend of yours. I didn't like that part of it either. Oh, the way he used to make love to me. Dolores, he'd say, you got a face like an angel. That's almost what Tom Stevens used to call me, angel face. He said he thought there never could be anyone like me. He had something there. He used to say he never could live without me. He said we'd love each other all our lives, the only part of our lives that mattered. And then... He'd kiss me. I bet that used to make you jealous, Al, huh? Uh, Didn't it, Al? Didn't that used to make you real jealous? I told you I didn't like that part of it, didn't I? Well, you won't have to be jealous anymore, will you, Al? You'll have your little Dolores all to yourself. You'll like that, won't you? Yeah. (laughs) We got 20 grand. And Dolores is going to buy her pretty little boy a nice present. We'll be home soon. Uh Uh-huh. And we'll be all alone, just Al and his Dolores. And Al is going to kiss his Dolores, isn't he? He's going to kiss her. Because then they'll be all alone. Turn on the light for a minute. Just kiss me first. Well, baby. Mm. All right. You can turn on the light now. Ah, Ah. Good evening, Dolores. I can see you weren't expecting me. This is Jeffrey Barnes again. In just a moment, we'll bring you Act Three of Angel Face. Now, a word from George Putnam. Every day, more and more people are discovering that to get real relief from the most common kind of dandruff, they must destroy the germ called Pity Rosporum ovale, which many outstanding authorities say is its cause. You see, merely washing or brushing away loose dandruff has no effect whatsoever on this germ. But one thing that does work is double dandrine. For double dandrine actually kills this germ on contact. Even in severe cases, results with double dandrine have been amazing. And the reason for double dandrine's astonishing effectiveness is a special ingredient, an active antiseptic so remarkably efficient many hospitals use it. In double dandrine, we call it Alzan. So stop trying to combat this dandruff with ineffective methods that actually are no better than plain water. They can't compare with double dandrine, for double dandrine destroys the cause. If you're not completely satisfied, you'll get your money back. Get double dandrine tomorrow. Yes, Dolores, it's me, Joe. Weren't expecting me, were you? You're supposed to be in a trunk six feet under. Take it easy, Al. Can't you see? He's got a gun. You're supposed to be dead. Why don't you two sit down? You're a little overwrought, both of you. No, there, right where you are. I think we have a few things to talk over, but calmly. That's why I have a gun, so we can talk things over calmly. But but you're supposed to be dead. 
You must have got out of the trunk while we were in the Maybe kitchen. you'd like a spot of brandy. You're probably chilly from your little expedition. Grave digging is so depressing, don't you think? No, don't worry. The brandy was not drugged. I saw that this morning. How did you get out? That trunk was locked. Yes, I thought it would be. That's why I saw a locksmith this morning when you were out and had it fixed so it could be unlocked from the inside. You see, I made a few plans, too. Like putting those weights in that trunk to take my place. Oh, you smart guy. You real smart guy. Huh? You have enough thing on us. We'll let the police be the judge of that. You're not going to call no cops, Joe. You can't afford to. You got a rap waiting for you, and you know it. A little matter of the bank's 20,000 bucks. All that. Well, you see, I don't work in a bank. What? What? Where'd you get that cash? It belonged to me. And you and I didn't meet by chance, Dolores. I'd huh? waited a long time to meet you. What? I'd looked for you for a long, long time. Well, what do you want to meet me for? Because I want to see you and this punk of yours hang for the murder of Tom Stevens in Chicago. <gasps> what you know about that? Shut up, Al. talk. It doesn't make any difference now. I've got all the evidence I need. It all fits together. Okay, so we did bump off Stevens. But it's still just your word against ours. No, it's your word. Your word's verbatim. I told you I did some planning, too. Well, the dictograph behind your chair has just this moment recorded your confession. Look, why are you... There, that's better. Oh, yeah, she wanted to know where I got that money, the 20000 you thought I'd taken from the bank. I told you it was mine. It is, and quite logically, too. The paid claim of a life insurance policy of which I was the beneficiary. Tom Stevens of Chicago. Tom Stevens? Yes, the man you killed. Tom Stevens. That's right, isn't it? That's right, isn't it, Angel Face? <sighs> Angel Face? That's what Tom... Yes, that's what Tom used to call you, isn't it? But how did you know? Oh, I guess I forgot to tell you. My name isn't Joe Anglin. It's Joe Stevens. You see, Tom was my brother. <laughs> Now, this is Jeffrey Barnes bringing down the final curtain on tonight's Mystery Theater presentation of Angel Face, starring Miss June Havoc. And thank you, Miss Havoc, for a thrilling performance. Miss Havoc was supported tonight by Richard Widmark as Joe and Larry Haynes as Al. Next week, we present a story entitled Squeeze Play, written by 16-year-old Leonard Thompson and starring that popular favorite of radio and screen, Walter Abel. Squeeze Play is the story of a dissolute and ne'er-do-well lawyer who on Christmas Eve discovers a surprising and dangerous gift awaiting him in his office. He follows this up in an effort to redeem himself and his career. And in the midst of murder and courtroom dramatics, the author, remarkable young Leonard Thompson, carries us to an extraordinary climax. So be sure to join us next week for Walter Abel in Squeeze Play. <laughs> Original music for the Mystery Theater is composed and conducted by Alexander Semler. Angel Face, originally entitled Murder on Her Mind, was written by Walter Wilson and adapted for radio by Don Agger. This is Dan Seymour saying good night and inviting you to be with us next Friday when the Mystery Theater <laughs> presents Squeeze Play, starring Walter Abel. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.